to Commissioner Holly, mm -hmm. okay, and whose district it's in. And we determined that it didn't make any sense to eliminate just very small ones because you could never build that Ridgefield Road. And that Ridgefield Road extension, just so you all know, with the concern with the wetlands, what we did was we purposely made that a two-lane road and only a 24-foot section, which curved the curve. And 24-foot section is the smallest section, a residential section, you can build a road. Before, it was going to be, I believe, 120-foot uh, right-of-way, okay? And it was going to be a four-lane road through there is what's planned in the county plan. So we reduced the size of it. We went out last year, and I'm sorry if you all didn't get the information from your HOA, but we went out last year and we walked and flagged the entire area with the citizens uh, from the townhomes and the citizens from the neighborhood. And you'll find that by moving it as far as possible to the north, if you walk that area back there, there's a ridge that goes all the way along there. The road more or less is going to be up on that ridge, so it's not going to be wetlands up on that ridge there. And it's pushed as far as possible to the, the, the existing right-of-way, because the right-of-way goes through there now. The county owns that strip. And again, it's either 100 or 120 foot. And we're going to reduce that down and protect that much more of what eventually could happen there if somebody else came in and did it. And we were able to work with the folks at the- uh, So on the inside of this road, how far, what's the distance you have to cut those trees? We did, we did a, uh, a uh, limits of clearing and grading. And the limits of clearing and grading did not go all the way down that slope in most, if not all, of the areas. And if it did, we would, we would avoid wetlands. Because if you impact the wetland, then you go to the Corps of Engineers, you go to the Corps of Engineers, you pay wetland uh, credits, penalties, whatever you want to call it. And so, you know, that's not something you really want to do. So it's it's one more reason we narrowed it, but we really narrowed the road and got transportation to go along with us so that uh, we, uh, so that, um, we could reduce the impact as much as possible. And at the same time, with respect to the traffic, what it does is it takes that traffic that comes down Apollo Drive and allows it to loop back out onto Ridgefield up to the light, as opposed to it coming down and going down Pilgrim's in way and going around like that. And if you live on that court, is that where you live, that court Scott, right below? Scott, the difference is, is not many people come down that road. Pardon me? That road isn't that traffic. Well, before we, before okay. we, it's not that traffic. I'm, well, that's fine. I'm, 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 so I'm, I'm, I'm just here to explain. I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet. No, no. I, I just wanted to make sure we, we understood. So the proffers did or didn't change? They didn't change. We're still doing all those improvements to the parkway. Okay. So We're still that, doing the improvement to that question? little hump that comes out, et cetera. So the, what, what Scott's saying is that um, there's under they haven't changed their plan. In other words, they haven't eliminated okay. any townhouses. So that was talk about what they'd have to do to eliminate in townhouses in, in their in their opinion? I didn't realize that what what was being mentioned with the um, the resolutions there that there was a connection from a, a one third reduction of the townhouses also impacting or not impacting another piece of the development. So thanks for that clarification. That's it's helpful. Okay. Um, so so it's going forward as as it was described. That For the most part, other than we increased calipers on trees, we uh, uh, put in some propers about the green screens that people were worried about on the building, about maintaining it. Uh, we uh, made a couple other changes. Facing. And we also, most importantly, I think, to a lot of people, you know, we, we increased the phasing so that the commercial <coughs> element uh, would come on at the same time because a lot of developers in the county, and I'm not saying this in a bad way against developers, had used the, the commercial zoning which is a tax revenue positive, and you know, a certain portion of this property should be commercial. And uh, we've made it so that we have to start construction on our commercial part at the same time that we do the residential part, so it's all completed at once. Because a lot of developments in Prince William County, they, they had a mix, and what they did was they built the residential, and then they didn't build the commercial. So that's, that's a major reason we made, and that was at the request of one of the supervisors that we do that and we have to answer that because we believe in our, our commercial section. Okay. So any other questions on, on, on that part of the transportation and that? Yes, ma'am. You mentioned, you mentioned increasing the caliber of the trees. Uh-huh. Meaning what? Meaning that how, I mean, how mature they are going to the ground. the size of a tree is. I'm saying are you increasing the size that you're keeping or that you're cutting? Oh, no, no that, that we're putting in. Putting in. The ones we're putting in. And also, just so you know, as far as the trees that we're cutting, if, if you looked at the parkway, um, at the parkway plan, the last one, 
Again, that road's not cutting through there, which would have been, had a significant impact going up to, to the parkway. And just to add, the reason that they went up to the park, that they don't want it up to the parkway, is because A, it would really create an unbelievable cut through. You would have gotten those four lanes through there. And the division between the intersection of uh, Hoadley and that area there would have been too short. So we're saving all those trees, plus we're saving all those trees in that stream valley, which you saw with the paths and everything else. All those trees, that greenery there, is the limits of clearing the gravy. Okay, we've, um, we've gotten way ahead of ourselves, but that's okay. Um, we, we were still talking about the, the existing condition and, and the new conditions if the, if the rezoning were to go through. And uh, Michelle pointed out to me um, that this, this is what we showed before, which is the existing conditions, PBD, Plan Business District. Um, and it's a little confusing because the line for the Apollo project is actually here and not here, which is the previous uh, zone. Um, and then this, this would be uh, the current zoning, I mean, sorry, the, the new zoning, if the uh, proposed Apollo project goes through. Now, it's just the lines that are, that are the Apollo project. In other words, they have the designations on these other properties, but that's what exists at this time. That's, that wouldn't change either way. So the B1, M2, M1, that would all stay the same. Um, that's, you know, you could call that possibly stale zoning because that's, uh, that, those properties were zoned that way many, many years ago. And, and, you know, the county was quite different. And of course, the parkway wasn't there. It was Davis Ford Road, a little two-lane one road. But um, in any case, th this would be um, M2 on this area of the property outlined by the red, and B1 on this area of the property. Um, and of course, the Walgreens property is not included in the rezoning at all. And then the residential, which is R6, which means um, basically townhouses. Uh, it would be rezoned to residential in this parcel over here uh, next to Kennard Park would be residential. Um, so, and, and in addition to, like we talked about before, under these uses, B1 and M2, um, there, there's a number of what would probably be considered undesirable uses uh, for, for this area of the county, for this gateway to mid-county area. Um, that they, uh, Scott and his group have proffered out a lot of these uses. In other words, they proffered out almost everything but a storage facility. And obviously, they, they want to build a storage facility, so they don't have to proffer that out. But, you know, gas station, um, all that list of stuff that could be available under those uses, for the most part, is proffered out. So that, that's, that's important to understand. Now, also keep in mind that if they're at a later date, um, if, it, if the project didn't get built, not, I know, I'm, I'm sure Scott's going to do everything he can to build this project and his group, but if it wasn't built and it was changed hands or something, there is a possibility that once you have the zoning, like I said, the zoning stays with the land, and um, the proffers under the project, which would be a voluntary <coughs> agreement between the developer and the county that these uses can't be put there. Um, once the zoning's on the land, you could have a proper amendment at a later date. I'm not saying it would happen and there would have to be a public hearing on that, but it's a possibility of a, of a proper amendment, which what I'm trying to say is um, that's a public hearing, but it's not like the change in the zoning on the land. It's something that possibly could be done if someone else got the property and, and something else happened later on down the line. But um, as far as Scott goes with his project, um, he's proffering out all this, what we would consider to be, I think most people consider to be bad uses, which some of those uses are already in existence right here, but you know, that we're hopefully in the future we can move away from some of that and, and get more towards, uh, there, there's an overlay district over this whole property and over the whole county center property that we're sitting in right now and, and this whole area is called the county center sector plan. And under that sector plan, it's like an overlay over the overlay that's the comprehensive plan. And under that sector plan, it's even more of a wish list as to how we want our community to develop. And under that county center sector plan, there's specific uh, architectural suggestions. Um, you, you can't work on requirements because the comprehensive plan is, is not a zoning ordinance. It's just an aspirational document. But there's architectural requirements. There's, there's um, building requirements, there's uh, density requirements, there's all these different things on the sector plan that even make it like a finer detail than the comprehensive plan. 
and this this is in that area. And that, what I'm trying to say is, in the future, when these projects get redeveloped, um, if they do, they would they would have to um, look at everything in relation to the sector plan and the comprehensive plan. But like I said at the beginning, also, once you have a zoning designation on a property like M1, you know it's it's pr pretty hard to get that off if someone, unless the owner wants that to come off their property and wants to rezone to something else. I mean, if they want to keep that use, they can keep that use. Yes, ma'am. I just have a question, Warren. Um, the bottom right PMD is that a bunch of is that homes or is that parking spaces? No, and what does that belong to? Those are the existing uh, townhouses. On and it's called the county center. That's across across from this building on the other side of, of the parkway. Mm -hmm. um, that's called the county center community. They have single family homes. They have townhouses. They have uh, apartments and condominiums. Uh -huh. Okay. They have a whole planned community on that side, and that's that's some of those. Um, but those are actually townhouses. As far as I'm, I'm pretty sure, those are townhouses. That they're and, showing. and there would be would there be any linkage from this project or what's projected into that neighborhood? That would be a question for Scott. I don't remember if you have the a only linkage that would be would be through our uh, natural path system. And uh, we spoke with those folks and told them that they wanted it. We, they, we'd be more than happy to give it because we're doing a lot of walking trails. But if they didn't want it, we wouldn't connect it to them. So, but any further linkage of any true transportation linkage? No. So all of our trails that we put on there are on our property or on the right of way that goes uh, access to Canard Park. So Scott, what's proposed in M2? The M2, yeah, the M2 is a, yes, it's a self-storage. Uh, it is proper, you know, I'm not, you know, you might have seen the front building there. It's the lowest traffic, one of the lowest traffic generating commercial uses there are. Uh, the biggest concern that we got at your neighborhood uh, was as far as traffic is concerned and the concerns about traffic and I realize that you don't feel that, that there's a lot of cut through traffic there now but uh, if you would use the other uses uh, that are allowable on this piece of property the traffic would increase greatly as opposed to with the self storage the traffic is minimal so it's a very very uh, for lack of a better word mellow land use and we worked with and Martin I hope you'll agree with me on this uh, at the beginning of this process, we worked with Midco, we worked with Locopal, we worked with other groups in designing this building. And this building is probably the highest level of architectural design that you will get in a self-storage place anywhere in Northern Virginia, and it should set the bar. It looks like an office building. We, we are not allowed to have any windows that show the doors behind them, you know what I'm saying? It, it, all the windows have to be tinted. We can't put any posters or signs or anything. All those things are proffered out of that. And I might add that when you're talking about the M2, we also said that an office building could go there one day too. So if one day you change that building over to an office building, it would be allowed there. So those two uses only out of M2. One thing that's not pointed out on the PBD is, is that the PBD is an overlying business district. If you take that PBD area, if you could go back one, please. If you take, take, if you take that PBD area, you have to understand currently it consists of B1, M2, and OF, okay? So, and, and Martin's been very, very upfront about these other uses that could be done there, but it's important to realize that M2 already exists on that property. It exists in a different spot. It basically exists across from the gym and then southward towards the Richfield community. And then right when you get to the Richfield, where that R6 piece is on the left, that right there is B1, which means big time retail, you know, whether it's a restaurant, a brewery, which some people might want, some of them said that to us once, but then across from that, right up next to the uh, Ridgefield Oaks uh, community on the other side of there, from that little R6 there, that's also B1. So you've got B1 retail right up next to that neighborhood there, and then you've got M2, and then it's B1 again when you get up to the top of that M2, that currently shows there as well. Yeah, and, but you know, like I said before, and the, the devil's in the details and all these things, and the, the, um, the previous developer did proffer out a good number of uses Absolutely. under those things. So, yes. you know, it, it's hard to sit here and, and weigh all these things out um, as far as the uses and, and, and which is what, what you can do here, what you can do there, under B2, under 
you know, RPC and all these different things. So did, was there a question? Something like okay. Um, so anyway, does, it, does anybody have any other questions about the actual project that you're not, that you're not clear on? Or the, I, I know you're probably not clear on the zoning. I could, I'll be honest with you, I've been dealing with this project for a couple of years now. Well, at, since Bill's on a parkway. So it's been eight years, and I'm still not 100% clear on all that stuff. So um, I doubt we're going to get there in 45 minutes. But uh, so anyway, uh, I just wanted to kind of move it along a little bit. Um, as we spoke briefly about, the Planning Commission um, had this project before them. Um, about a month ago, and, and they um, voted um, five to three, I think. Um, in any case, they voted to move it along. And as Scott said before, the Planning Commission doesn't decide anything. They just make a recommendation to the Board of County Supervisors. And the Board of County Supervisors sometimes goes by that recommendation, sometimes they don't, sometimes they modify things or whatever. The, what, the, what the Planning Commission recommended um, was that they reduced the townhouses by 28, 28 townhouses, to um, expand the commercial on the property. In other words, the, the townhomes that we see. Um, 32, 32 units. Okay, 32 units. Um, maybe that was just my wishful thinking there. Um, okay. The, the planning commission recommended to take away some of the townhomes down to around right here. Um, you said 32? 32, 32 townhomes. And ex basically expand this commercial. And the, the reason that they, um, the reason they recommended that is, and, and this is getting the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance again. I apologize for that. But this property under the comprehensive plan is planned for CEC, Community Employment Center. And under that CEC designation, the recommended ratio of commercial to residential is 25%. In other words, on a project that a developer comes along on a given parcel under the CEC designation, the comp plan would like them to have at least, no, or I should say, no more than 25% of the floor <coughs> area ratio be residential. And this project has about 60% of the floor area uh, ratio residential which obviously is a little skewed towards the residential. So the Planning Commission said, well, um, we know how to fix this. We can, if, if the developer would remove these townhomes basically down to here and put more commercial in, then that would help this floor area ratio out and, and be more um, amenable to the CEC, Community Employment Center designation. And another reason um, that this is becoming more and more important is that I, I know some of you have been here before when, we, when we've talked about the strategic plan and we've talked about diversifying the tax base in Prince William County. Prince William County has been a bedroom community for as long as it's been, a, well, as, as long as it's had a comprehensive plan. And since, since it was farmland, it's basically been a, a bedroom community for Washington, D.C., and that's not going to be news to anybody sitting in this room. Um, so we've been trying and trying and trying, we being the county and citizens and civic groups and, and everyone, we've been trying to change that paradigm for many years and now we got a, a strategic plan committee that came out forcefully and said they, their, their plan their report said look we're at about 14 percent commercial tax base right now we want to see the tax base expand to 35 percent and we'd like to see that within four years now whether we'll get there within four years is 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 um, you know debatable but it's it's an aspirational goal I mean just like and, and, and Dan Veroni, who's not here tonight, but was, was the uh, main proponent of this on the strategic plan. You know, he, he likes to uh, make the analogy to John F. Kennedy when he made the speech about going to the moon. You know, he made that speech in front of um, the world at that time, and there was no technology to do that. I mean, there was no NASA. There was the, most of the rockets we had blew up shortly after they took off. Um, and, and there was no, nobody knew how to do that. And he said, we're going to do this, we're going to the moon, and we're going to do it by the end of the decade. And all the scientists back, and the government scientists were going, what did he just say? What the hell is he talking about? We can't do that. But they did it. So, and it, so this is a similar, I mean, it's not a similar thing, but this is an aspirational plan. 
And the reason I think it's so important is because, you know, our taxes go up every year. Our residential taxes go up every year. And, and the residential taxes, as, as we just laid out, pay for the vast majority of the county government. I mean, our, our residential property taxes pay for everything for the most part, 84%, 82 to 84%. So if we can manage to diversify this tax base and get the commercial paying more, and get more commercial this, into this area. So you're and saying all taxes are going to drop as a result of Well, the either that or, or there will be less raising of our taxes. Slows down the increases. Uh, what's that? Slows down the increases. Slows the increases. Slows the rate of increase. With the government, you never really get a cut in anything. You get a slower rate of increase if you're lucky. So um, it could slow the rate of increases. It could help us to get some of the amenities that we want as far as parkland and, and, and open space and that kind of thing. And, and it'll, you know, and plus, in a perfect world, it could be, help us become a community where people can live and work and play and not have to drive to DC and not have to, you know, sit in traffic for two hours every day. You know, I mean, I know I'm dreaming, but yeah. this, this is something that, that we have to do. Uh, yeah, I don't think a storage unit versus no. a government yeah. employee is going to make a difference. I mean, either you work at the Pentagon or you work at a storage unit, I mean, it's, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, yeah, but, that's but this is where we're going with the CEC, and this is why Midco thinks it's so important. And you know, and it's hard for developers because there's not a real market for office right now. I mean, people aren't going to DC to shop. So if you're putting retail in there, you know, you're not. I don't think people are going to work at a mall in DC. No. Right? So if you're going to put offices or government employment, or you're going to lease out government buildings there then you might be able to employ people out of D.C. and bring them to Prince William County. And that, that would be the ideal situation. And But the only problem is, even in D.C., they're not selling office space anymore, you know? Even in D.C., K. Fritz was one of the top developers in D.C. for many, many years. He's building buildings now that are flexible. They can go from office to residential and back and forth as the need arises. And, and so, you know, developers are constantly telling us office doesn't sell. Mm -hmm. And I'm finally halfway kind of believing them. So I don't know what the what we need to do. There's something else, you know. We need to get this the best minds in the county and in the area together and try to figure out how we do this, how we diversify this tax base. But on this particular project, that would certainly help to try to get more commercial in here. At least I know it's not a, a great employment center, but it would get more commercial tax. And you know, is the difference between another 10, 50. 80,000 square feet going to change our tax base? No, it's not going to, but it's a move in the right direction. So, um, but that's why the Planning Commission, did, to circle back to where I started, that's why the Com Planning Commission made that recommendation. Uh, and then also made some other recommendations, like there's the developers proposing some green walls on part of the part of the buildings, and it was they were proposing this because um, one of the supervisor's offices asked for that. Um, and the planning commission didn't like that, so they're kind of going back and forth, like, you know, put it on, take it off, put it, whatever. So um, that was another recommendation. And uh, Kay, if you can remember any of the other recommendations, I think that, that was pretty much the. The caliper, the green screens, which I think they're going to put it anyway, but um, yeah, I think they're going to do it. Okay, so, so that's where we're at as far as going into the Board of County Supervisors. Right. And, the school, the school now. The trailer. The trailer. The trailer. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. And there was there was an issue. Uh, the, the developer has been asked to um, contribute for a school trailer. To, to yes. Sir. Actually, our proper says that he will give the school the extra forty five thousand dollars for whatever use that they might want it for. That's legally. Yeah. Well, no, it's not legally. It's actually actually it's a very strong point. That the planning commission wanted because the planning commission is not happy nor is staff with the school board because of some of the things the school board's doing and i won't pick sides or get yeah, into that yeah. but i want to add that in addition to that forty-five thousand, we are paying under the old proper system which as martin said does not exist anymore that you can't extract we're paying 1.7 million dollars in coffers for schools alone from this project as well okay. so and that's what they call a level of service and the level of service is a number that the county staff comes up with every several years and says this is what it costs to house a new student and we're meeting that with the new proffer law which was passed last year and went into effect 
2016, July 1st, which we were grandfathered from that, that new law now makes it very difficult to extract anything from developers. I, for one, do not agree with it, but the industry, particularly down in Richmond, and the state, uh, the state association of home builders pushed very hard, and it went through. And this was before that. And then, you know, just to build on Scott's point, uh, they may end up <coughs> being sorry what they wished for because they actually got it. And now, I, I think what we're going to see, and what we're starting to see already, is is a, a, a real dampening effect on development at all. I mean, when when you have a situation where you can't help pay for projects, you, and you know the project's gonna result in your taxpayers paying more taxes, then that, that's a real um, that's that's a real motivation for the county to just not approve projects. I mean, unless unless they're super, super good projects. So um, it, it may backfire on them, and I think they're gonna rethink that within the next year or so. I think that, I think the legislature's gonna rethink that, but as of now, they haven't. They have so um, so the, basically what the schools have said is that the elementary, the, they don't have the capacity for this project for these students under the existing elementary school system that they have. They would need to have a trailer temporarily, they say for a couple of years until they get the new school built that's over there near Chen. Um, so they, they are asking the developer to contribute money to uh, buy and place, you know, move a trailer into position. Uh, so. There, there's, um, I think there's legal questions as to whether that's even legal to ask somebody to do that because he's the developer's coming in under the old proper system, and then they're asking for something that's a little different. So um, there's questions about legality, and I think there's some folks that are looking into that before the board, the plan, uh, board of county supervisors meeting. Um, and there's also a question of whether you want to start. It's it's kind of a precedent to set to say that you're going to approve development knowing that you have to have a trailer. You, you know, I understand that they're saying it'll only be a couple of years, but then another development comes along, and then so I, I don't know. I, I don't know that they've ever done this before, as far as um, specifically saying we're going to approve this and we're going to build a trailer to take these kids. Uh, I mean, nobody likes school trailers. Nobody likes the kids to be in them. Teachers don't like them, um, and and they're you know they're they're not ideal. So, um, but it, it is a temporary. You know, they're, they're saying it's a temporary solution until the capacity is there in a year or two when that school's built. Yes, Martin, with all due respect, uh, again, we don't agree with the $45,000 proper. The uh, Board of Supervisors doesn't agree with it. Uh, we agreed to give them $45,000 extra. It's not for a trailer for our students. In fact, the Chin Parkway School is going to be built, and it's going to be open in September of 2019. Our first units will not come onto... Uh, it will not be occupied until the summer of 2019. And the, the school capacity right now is only in the elementary school is it over. If you take the six elementary schools in this region here, if you just go out, outwards to six schools, you add the new school to that, and these schools will be uh, then at an 87% capacity and won't be over at all. So there's the room to do it. And that's based upon the new programmatic formula, which is much more stringent than the old formula as to figuring out how many classrooms you need for a certain amount of students and what size those classrooms are. So specifically, ours, our, our, the schools will be in place when ours goes in, and CHIN is approved and ready to go. But, okay, um, and I don't want to get in a... In a I, I understand, I just want to make the point, but, I won't say anything else. Why would they want $45,000? Because they were trying to make a point and we got caught we got caught right at the nexus. Well, no, the school is under capacity. I mean, the school is over capacity right now. They did say that that money would be for a trailer. They, I, I have a letter showing that. But his, but his proper doesn't say anything about a trailer. Yeah, because we wouldn't do it. And, and that's that's so the school board can do whatever they want with the money. But that's I have I ha wait a minute. I have a letter from the school saying it's for for a trailer for that school. The school says that, but the property. Okay, but it. that's why the property is initiated. So it's a little disingenuous I, I, I agree to say with you. it's not for the I agree with you. I, I agree with you 100%. Mm -hmm. And I know where you're caught in the middle. I yeah. understand that. Yeah, we're just and caught I don't in the middle. I think, what's more, I think what's more important is the $1.7 million. Yeah. Okay, so, any other questions on all, all we've used? Um, so I know that I have heard that there was a development plan for on the other side of Davis Ford Road um, at that intersection where kind of where Brightview landscaping is. Is that still a planned 
Yeah. Yes, that, that project's been, uh, been approved. It's called Hoadley Falls. Mm -hmm. There's three uh, stages, three mm -hmm. phases, one, two, and three. Um, they've, uh, I think they've all been approved now. At least two of them have, and I think they've all been approved. There is no word on anybody starting break ground or anybody doing anything on the project, but it is approved. It's ready to go. How many homes are in that neighborhood? I believe 50. Um, so 50 in addition to the 100 planned for this neighborhood? Yes, ma'am. 50 there. And, and, um, <coughs> and then, of course, there's a number of other properties that are, that are available around, around the area. They're, actually, huh, I, I don't know if anybody, everybody's aware of this, but if you, if you go down the parkway just a little bit further towards Manassas, about just a little past um, where that um, turn around is. Was that what? Turn around. Well, no, this is just a little, a little past where the existing um, um, uh, the landscape places off Davis Ford Road that backs up to the parkway. Just a little bit past there, um, on both sides of the parkway, are uh, there's most of it's on the Davis Ford Road side of the parkway, but it's like 600 acres of undeveloped land in there. That, that will be developed uh, at some point in the future. And that, that's behind the, um, the existing uh, Harris Teeter Shopping Center along the parkway, and it's on the other side of the parkway. And so all together you're looking at 600 acres there that will be developed. Um, it's con plan for SRR, which is most of the mid-county area, it's con plan SRR, it's suburban rural residential, which means that um, you, it, it's, I won't, you can't say required, but it's recommended that you build on the average lot size of 2.5 acres. In other words, if you have a 100 acre parcel, you can have lots as small as one acre for individual houses, but the average for that 100 acres should be 2.5 acres. So it's comp planned for large lot residential. Um, we, we normally at Midco see developers coming in, or not normally, I should say often, see developers coming in with projects where they're asking for one acre lots average on, a, on, a, on SRR parcels. There's actually, um, uh, there's been probably three in the last five years that have come through, not necessarily right in mid-county, but it is suburban rural residential SRR zone comp plan properties um, where they've gotten one acre lots or 1.1 acre lot average or something like that. So um, it, it is a significant parcel and, it, and it's, it, it could be, there's a lot of environmental on that parcel. There's, a, there's steep slopes, there's streams, there's there's a lot of complications to that, but um, we're really watching that property close because that's a big one. That's a big one. And so you, someone, you were asking about, um, you know, the number of homes coming in, and, and that could result in, you know, two, three, four hundred homes right there. So, anybody else have any? Yes, sir. I have one question. I don't know if you're talking about it. With the development going in, you know, right there where the Apollo Gym is. Mm -hmm. That when they have an um, event, the event, it, that road is. Pat. So was there something going to be helping them get more of that land over there? Because I know once we develop it, that, isn't that land, I mean, isn't traffic going to be even worse? Exactly. Well, you What's figure each town has kind of two cars. Mm -hmm. Two cars is 200. That's, uh, mm -hmm. They're going to be parked on that street. That's another exactly. that 800 cars. So it's just, you know, yeah. you can't turn off that two lane road because that two lane road is just two lanes if you're going to build that road. So they're going to come straight down to that call site. I have the same concern too because there isn't enough you know, parking. With the hundred homes or whatever, park, they'll be parked along the Apollo Drive. And they do that now anyway. They do it now. I'm just wondering. Yeah. There's, there's some trees behind the um, gym that they park halfway. Has anybody talked to them about giving well, that, some that's of that? That's part of that park, right? That's the extension of the park. Are you talking about right in here? Yes. Okay. Um, that's a separate parcel that's not part of this development. And that's. Um, that's this all that is a, mix stuff. This is the Royal Canard Park right here. Oh, gosh, and this is part of the Apollo development, the proposed Apollo development, which would be townhouses. But this parcel here is, is not part of the pr proposed Apollo development. This and is for sale. That's for sale. That's for sale. That's all that it's currently well, whatever the current And, and let's look at let's look at um, Yeah, that's like that. So right now people yeah. park up and down the side on both yeah, sides. Yeah, they park of the on street. both sides of the street. They come down they to do our neighborhood and the corner side. No street. So it's wide right now. But so I don't know if afterwards you develop it. It's not gonna be wide because you put it immediately in the middle. And, and here's here's the immediately in the middle of a pot, right? Oh no. Oh no, you got rid of that. Yes. No, we don't have one. It's a two-lane road. So Apollo Road, as it is right now, would remain yes, the will. same width. Yes. Same there, if people kind of park in these tunnels, 
or along the, the, the side of the townhomes are over parked for county standard and the uh, the garages are proffered that nobody can build out the garage space to living space so they each have two parking spaces as well as we have 40 visitors parking spaces within the townhomes themselves and anything that we can do to discourage residential parking along that road uh, we will do. It's a public road. People can park on yeah, it or absolutely. drive on it or whatever. But they're not going to narrow the road. There's no plan to narrow that road. Pardon me? There's no plan to narrow that road. No. no. We, we actually suggested, what we suggested doing was to do uh, traffic calming measures where you bump it out and then come back in and bump it out and come back in. Yeah. And we suggested doing that, but uh, county staff didn't want to do it because what we what we think is and it's like the two lane road that you know that two lane road will handle plenty of traffic but by making it two lanes it actually makes it a it's a, it's a psychological traffic calming measure slows people down same thing with having the townhouses front out once people hit a neighborhood they have a tendency to slow down a little bit more not not a lot but we did ex we did uh, explore the bump outs and we were told by staff they didn't want to go there. Why okay. is it? Why is it that we're, when you say two parking spaces per townhome, two garage it, spaces? You're talking about them being a garage space. So the There's garage a garage is, space and then the space in front of the garage. Right. So that's the two. So well, it's actually it's, it's actually four. <laughs> Plus we have garages? regular parking. We have regular parking that is has 40 visitor park parking. But it's one townhome. Right, two and each town home has one garage and a space outside the garage. One two-car garage, two car and then a two-car pad. Uh -huh. So theoretically, you should be able to park four like cars. A single family home, yeah. And the towns will face Apollo, correct? They will face Apollo without having any driveways going up to them from there. I understand that. Yes. And, have cars and I think you, you'll find it very doubtful that somebody's going to park their car out on that street at night when they have a garage and a parking. And, and they, oh yeah, they will. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not saying some people won't, okay, but it's okay. Also, the ones had uh, stated that they were going to put uh, like a big flat iron storage. fence all around the storage facility. No, it's not going to be all around the self-storage. Oh, wait, I have, I have a, a visual on that. Did you have an <laughs> estimate of what those are going to sell for at this townhouse? It should be about $400,000 average. Now, before we go to the fence, I just wanted to display footage. Well, square footage probably would be in the, I would imagine the mid twos and above the mid twos. And you know, we've proffered all those front, uh, all the front facades and all the north and south facades to be either hardy plank or brick or stone. And by putting the fronts facing the road and you're coming into the neighborhood there, you basically are looking at the front of the townhouse, not the back of that townhouse, not the porch in the back, not the aluminum siding in the back or vinyl siding in the back, and you know, the beloved grill. You know, you're looking at the front of the home going down there. Okay, I just want to circle back before I get too far. Um, there was a question about the wooded area that was in here, that was behind the gym, and that is part of the previous rezoning that is kind of planned for planned business district. So if you if you have been following along what we've been talking about, um, it's the same zoning that's on these properties on part of the Apollo property and, and all here so um, it's likely that would be that would be built out and would be built out by right without any public hearings like you're going to have on Tuesday for this um, it could be built out by right and it, it'll be you know a commercial type use would be there on that property unfortunately those trees will go eventually um, and then like we talked about before there is an M1 use that's up here that um, uh, again, it's by right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you may have already answered. You may have already discussed this. I came in late, but it, are we looking at what the traffic impact is going to be on Davis Ford Road in the morning? There I mean, has been a traffic study done for the for this. Um, it's available on the county's um, website. The traffic study with with the changes. Now, um, of course, they don't they don't look at what possible future changes could come in as far as some of these other problems we've been di they're discussing, but. They, they look at the, they do a traffic study, actually the applicant pays for it, they do a traffic study um, on the impact of Prince William Parkway, Hoadley totally Road, and, and the area roads nearby. But the Prince nearby. William Parkway is not the problem. Davis Ford Road in the morning, it takes me 20 minutes to go a mile and a half out of my neighborhood up to the, and it's only getting worse, and adding another 400 cars to that is going to, 
This is this is the other side. This is not on Davis Ford side. This is the other side. But they come up that way. When people come up that way, people come from Woodbridge and cut across Davis Ford. Yeah. Instead of going on the parkway, yeah. to go up through Clifton, go up to Fairfax, go up to 66. And I mean, I drive to Reston. A third of my commute time is sitting on Davis Ford Road in that first 20 minutes where I'm sitting to go a mile and a half. And so if you add another 400 cars to that, you know, we're never going to get off of Davis Ford Road. Yeah, but, uh, and, you know, um, we're going to go into, you know, how you can make your voice heard at the, at the Board of County Supervisors meeting. And, and, and supervisors are the final deciders. In other words, they'll say yes, no, or they could defer it if there's some situation where they want to have more time to think about it or they want the applicant to look into something or, or something like that. They could defer it. But if they don't, it'll be uh, up or down. And, and they're the main ones to make sure uh, hear you. So the question on the fence, here is the path of the fence. If you can see, you, you, this is Hoadley Road. This is Prince William Parkway up in here. The blue is the path of the fence. Uh, and I have a visual on, I have a visual on the actual fence. Any other questions on the fence or? So, so parking for this self storage will be within the fence line itself. Parking? Yeah. Someone shows up with your stuff, it's going to be inside the fence line. That's correct. Yeah, here's okay. some. Here's, uh, let's let's uh, look at this again. See, the, the um, storage facility is has a gate here, and then this is all parking for the storage facility. And this is the blue is the fence. Will there be boat storage? Yeah. RV storage? No outdoor storage. Proffered out. That's, yeah, like we said, he, he proffered, the applicants proffered out a lot of the normally allowed uses under that classification. Any other questions about the project? Yes. Yeah. How about buffers? How about how wide are the buffers? all around it, especially up there. I saw on the right side, it looked as though there were quite a few trees. Can you on the left the side, thing? by the storage, I didn't see anything. Uh, on, what, now, you, you're talking about the trees in here, uh, <coughs> between the, the project and Davis Fort, I mean, uh, uh, Prince William Parkway? No, it looked as though there might be some there, but I did not see any on the other side of the storage. You, you mean? Off of Apollo Drive? In here? Along Apollo. Uh, over here. Yeah, that's that's, that's not going to be storage up there. That's going to be those store furniture. If you go back to it, yeah, the image, it was probably third Yeah, I'll, wait, I'll, I have a um, actual elevation on that somewhere. But we do have, we know all those trees are going to be coming down, all the way down Apollo. Yeah, yeah. Right. Bird's eye view might, uh, there's some champion yeah, trees yeah. in there. Right now. Yeah. All those trees are going to come down. Yeah. He had mentioned that to us. So, He's got so, to do that. Now you're ta you're talking about in here, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Along Between the wall of greens and the storage facility. Yes, if the whole back of that building is lined with a because um, that's a zone line. You have to go down there and you have to put in a, a I believe it's a type three or a type four buffer against the whole back of that cell storage there. And then to your question from Apollo, that is those two little buildings and. Uh, Martin can show you the images of those two buildings. Yeah, I'm here somewhere. I can find it. Oh, yeah, I'm just using the map because there are houses there. There. Now that's that's from Apollo Drive looking at the I mean the um, retail buildings. Yeah. Is that, so was that no, your question? No trees. No. All those trees that are there now are going to So behind those buildings are. Be the self -storage. Self -storage. This is a self-storage. This is the green wall we we're talking about, I believe. And here's another green wall. And that's just where vines are growing on. But I think that got knocked down. As far as like yeah. the last, I think that got. So there's going to be very little vegetation over there now when this gets done. Yeah. yeah. And here's another view from a column. So you have taller green here. And when he was referring to caliber of trees, we're planting caliber with a certain caliber of tree, I 
Okay. I recall correctly, it was a two inch caliper of tree. Yes, and we went so up to a two inch diameter. That's not a very big, you know. Right. Because currently, I thought there was like really old protected trees back on that, on that property. Um, well, you know, I, I walked that property, and, and um, the, the, the most old growth, the best old growth trees I saw on the entire property were on the path where Richfield Road is going to be extended. Unfortunately, that now the community was in, a lot of the community was in favor of that Richfield Road being extended. To be honest with you, but but the, I mean that's just the way it is. That's the, the trees between now. Now let, let's make sure we understand this, Scott. Mm -hmm. um, these are, are the trees behind the 7-Eleven. Yeah, and so these won't be disturbed. That's okay. correct. Okay. And these None of those trees that you see coming all the way up to that corner are going to be disturbed. And then also we're going to take that whole corner and we're going to landscape that corner. And that corner is going to have a monument in it so it, it has the same feel and look as the, uh, the government center like with, the pillar, uh, uh, with the pillars. Yeah, this right here, doing that. There's actually going to be a landscape and uh, plaza in front of the self storage there. At that. I think that's an old rendering, yeah. actually. Yeah, I that's think those older. are a little outdated. Yeah, or, no, that, that one's I good. I haven't gotten the <laughs> go, back down, go back down. This uh, way. Or up, right, right. right there. So we're going to do that so that we can kind of tailor that uh, corner right there and have that look there. What we're trying to do is we're trying to influence. I mean, one, one of the benefits, we, we believe, of what we're doing is we're going to be able to influence, like Martin said, when the folks come in to redo the 7-Eleven, when they come in to do Branscombe's, when they come in to do those other buildings along there, which they will eventually, we'll set a, a different tone that the county's going to be able to look at and, and point and say, you're going to have to do something that looks like this right here because somebody's already done it. It's not an unreasonable request. And by the way, that new property law does not apply to commercial properties. Yes, sir. Question for you. Early on in the discussion, you made a reference to converting that building to another use. Is well, it, basically, what I said sign? was it could either be the cell storage or it could be office. That's the, the zoning will only allow that on that but, but it wasn't designed as a self storage facility that at some future date can be it, turned into office. It's not designed to, you know, we're not sitting there saying we're going we're gonna to do this column spacing, that column spacing. So such and such can happen and everything else but but that is how it's zoned so, so it would have to be torn down well it. torn down and modified or whatever the okay. case might be okay yes ma'am so in terms of planting um i know with the new fire station they went in and they did <coughs> reforestation they brought in a lot of native plants is there any kind of requirement or any kind of standard for what kind of plants are going to be used yes. this isn't we have a lot of bread we have and things that yes are going to no just so you know, I've been in the landscape business for 41 years. Okay. I have a native plant nursery in Ray, Virginia with 18,000 native trees in it that we sell to the industry and we promote. We've promoted in the common areas here to do, in the common areas to do native trees. We do that on all our projects. Additionally, the buffer between the, uh, the buffer between the residential portion and the commercial portion it's the full 100 feet. A lot of people try and do a DCF, DCF, DCSM <laughs> uh, change so that they can reduce that. We did not, and we actually created a specific design for that buffer to use various successional trees on it so that you would have the earliest successional trees at the outside of it intermixed with your later successional trees and our climax successional climax trees and then as you get more towards the center, even putting more of those in there so that you'll have eventually a hardwood forest there, but you'll start off with the earlier successionals so it grows up quickly. I am delighted to hear that. Thank you. Um, it's it's a very important aspect to us. And also, you know, might add that, uh, you know, when you see that green on that down plan, that's all proper. You can't go an inch beyond that. That's what they call uh, limits of clearing and grading. And again, we're going to have trails throughout there, uh, natural trails throughout that area there. And so any other plants you use, are you going to try to use natives as well? We're trying to use natives as much as possible. But but you can't be a purist with that because if you end up being a purist with native plants. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. There's certain areas for certain. Wait a minute, I'm a purist with native plants. Well, <laughs> yeah, in, a, in, a, in, a commercial, in a commercial environment. I mean, if you, know, if you have a row of plants up against the front of those stores and you need a tight edge, 
yeah. you're probably going to use a U or you're going to use some kind of a boxwood or something. Yeah. But by all means, you will not see a bright red pear there. Okay. And there'll be a lot of other trees you won't see there as well. All right. Thank you. I you're appreciate welcome. that. Okay, uh, anything else on follow project? Just a question about the retail. I know Lytle was mentioned. Are there any other stores that you know and businesses that might be going in there? We have a lot of empty storefronts already, already around in Ridgefield and across the street at the Harris yeah. Shopping our, Center. Our, our retail is very limited, and you know we made it to, to be very flexible retail space, which means that basically you could have a Long and Foster there or you know, Wiker Realty or whatever realty company, you could have a dentist there, something like that. Much more of a, it, it, it's being built and designed much more for a neighborhood service type. And hey, if you get an ice cream shop there, not that we're gonna do that to the Purple Moose or whatever it is. Frosty Moose, Frosty sorry. But um, if you get you know some kind of little shop there, a coffee shop or something like that, great, you know, wonderful. But it's, it's designed, because we have to build those buildings. We proffered to build them, as I said at the beginning of the meeting. So we're going to we're going to have the the interior spacing of those buildings so that they can be very flexible to the type of use that can go in there, but they will be clean up skill uses again, <coughs> like professional office, uh, like a like I said a dentist or or it could be a small shop, et cetera, et cetera, along those lines. And by the way, all those images you've seen, those images are part of what they call the design guidelines. Those design guidelines are part of the proffers. They're enforceable by law, and, you, and, they, and if you don't do it the way they look, okay, then they shut you down. It has to look like that. They're not just pretty pictures. They're actually part of the proper package, which is the legal package that, that governs what we do on that piece of property. Another question now? Um, again, the, the pond that's currently existing, the plan for that is to, that's going to be all gone. You're going to move that pond to the opposite side of the street? No. Is that now we're, we're, we're pushing that pond to the east, okay? And that pond's gonna become what they call a wet pond. So it will become a, a landscape feature, okay? Where it's actually not up and down and up and down. And I mean, that pond there, I'm sure a lot of people like it, but it looks a little bit rough. But bottom line is we're just pushing it down, pushing it to the east a little bit. The pond's roughly right here now, right? Yeah, even a little bit more to the west. Probably to that, that right behind the first townhouse. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so we're pushing it down and around. And by the way, for anybody in the community, we're also that right of way that everybody's talking about. We're taking the sliver that goes along the property line of the of the uh, of the community and giving that back to the community of Richfield Oaks. And again, as Martin uh, you know so kindly pointed out, that right of way will now be eliminated. And that risk of that road going out there is forever gone. You're talking about the, the sliver that's right <coughs> by the top line. Where the yes, top exactly. Yes, exactly. It's, it's going to expand that area. That's so right. you're going to move. Well, how is that going to be? This right away. It's just, giving, it's just giving more property. It's it's not going to change. All the way. All the way down. Basically, that tree line yeah. on the south side of the pond, mm -hmm. that's going to remain exactly the same. We're not cutting into that tree line. Okay. Any other questions? On the project, we just want to get into now um, how how to make your voice heard. So, this project is going to go to the Board of County Supervisors on June twentieth, Tuesday, at seven thirty p.m. Now, there's a there's not a lot ahead of it, so it'll be coming up pretty. Luckily, it'll be coming up pretty much first thing. There's consult what they call a consolidated agenda, which means there's some things that nobody has any big issues with, so they just kind of do this all at once. They just voted through and, and they're done with. So uh, it'll be shortly after 7.30, maybe quarter of 8, maybe 8 o'clock that the Apollo project gets heard by the Board of County Supervisors. Now, yes ma'am, did you have a question? I, I got an email from the Potomac Nationals who are also coming to the Board of Supervisors on Tuesday to gain approval or, or gain a disposition on their property over at Stone. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I can Guaranteeing that's going to have a lot of people. Yeah, they're speaking at citizen time. At seven. Mm. They're going to speak at 7.30. Okay, well, that'll, that'll, that'll drag things <laughs> out a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. forget everything I just said. It's going to be yeah. 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 And, and so will Grace Church. We were told it's going to be a late night because yeah. Grace comes before us and the Potomac National Contention yeah. speaks. We're last. So go out and have a dinner. Well, well, we're well, last. Right right now, um, well, that's a consolidated public hearings. The Grace Church is consolidated. So. 
Should, that should go pretty quick. Yeah, but, but we just think there'll be a lot of people speaking. Well, the, the um, since they're having the this, people are going to speak on the stadium at that time. That, that you know, they each get three, uh, two minutes. So if there's a lot of people there, it's going to take a lot of time. So mm -hmm. sorry did about that. Did you review the stadium at all? Did you? What's that? Um, did you look at the stadium at all? Did you get into that as, as a metro group or? No. No. Um, so so, but it, the. Um, if you can't make the meeting, you can email the Board of County Supervisors, and I have um, a handout here that Kay put together. Um, there's also information on the Midco website about how, how to um, contact the supervisors, how to make your voice heard. It's midcopw.net, and there's, there are sheets up here if you want to take one. It has all our contact information for Midco, Facebook, and all that. Um, under current projects, on the Midco website, you can look at information on each project that we've been working on um, from the strategic plan to Apollo to some of the other um, projects we're going to talk about real briefly tonight as far as updates go. Carter's Grove and uh, the Davis Ford Park on Davis Ford Road that's going to take the place of the sewage treatment plant. Um, our, our letter that we are sending to the Board of County Supervisors on this project, uh, our Midco's opinion on the project, um, is there under the Apollo um, tab on the current projects. So if you want to take a look at Midco's letter, that's all there for you. So let me just um, hand these out to folks. We're going to pass them down. This is how to contact your supervisors. Um, if you want to go to uh, assistance time, you can speak. You. If you don't, you, if you want to email them or call them or you know, however you might want to do it, there's, um, there's a number of different ways to make yourself heard.